Your diabetes medication is working, your diet is decent, you're doing most things right, yet your A1C barely moves, your fasting numbers stay stubborn, and nobody can explain why. Here's what most doctors never check, mineral deficiencies. Right now, millions of people with type 2 diabetes are unknowingly deficient in minerals that directly affect how insulin works in your body. And when these minerals run low, your blood sugar control suffers, no matter how many pills you take. The cruel irony? High blood sugar itself depletes these minerals faster. Your kidneys flush them out. Your body burns through them, creating a downward spiral where the very condition you're fighting makes the deficiency worse. This isn't alternative medicine or internet speculation. This comes from peer-reviewed clinical trials and meta-analyses published in major medical journals. Real science, verifiable data, specific numbers you can look up yourself. I'm about to show you four minerals that research demonstrates can support healthier blood sugar when levels are optimized. No miracle claims, no exaggerations, just evidence you deserve to know about. One mineral in particular, the fourth one I'll discuss, has research so controversial that most health videos won't give you the complete story. I will. You need the full picture before making any decisions. And if you're new here, welcome to the channel. We focus on research-backed health information for adults serious about taking control. Hit subscribe so you don't miss upcoming videos. Drop your country in the comments. I'd love to know where you're watching from. And if this video helps you understand something new, a like makes a real difference in helping others find this information. Magnesium glycinate. This mineral controls over 300 enzyme reactions in your body, yet studies estimate 25 to 38% of people with type 2 diabetes are deficient. Some research puts that number even higher. Here's why magnesium matters for blood sugar. It helps insulin receptors function properly. Think of insulin as a key trying to open a lock on your cells. Magnesium keeps those locks working smoothly. Without enough magnesium, the locks get rusty and stiff. Insulin shows up, but cells don't respond well. This creates insulin resistance, and it gets worse when you're diabetic because elevated blood sugar causes your kidneys to excrete more magnesium through urine. What does the research actually show? A 2022 meta-analysis in the British Journal of Nutrition examined 18 randomized clinical trials. At doses around 500 mg daily for 24 weeks, the estimated reduction in HbA1c was 0.48%. Fasting glucose dropped an estimated 15.58 mg per deciliter. Another pooled analysis of 24 randomized controlled trials found magnesium supplementation significantly reduced fasting blood glucose. Subgroup analyses showed greater HbA1c reductions in participants aged 65 and older and those supplementing for longer periods. The effects are modest but real. For someone with an A1c of 7.5 or 8, a half-point drop is meaningful progress toward better control. How do you know if you're deficient? Standard blood tests often miss magnesium deficiency because most magnesium lives inside cells, not in blood serum. Common symptoms include muscle cramps at night, especially in your calves, fatigue despite adequate sleep, irregular heartbeat, anxiety, and persistent constipation that doesn't respond to typical remedies. Food sources and dosing. Pumpkin seeds, spinach, almonds, black beans, and dark chocolate above 70% cocoa all provide meaningful amounts. For supplementation, research typically uses 300 to 500 milligrams daily. Magnesium glycinate is preferred because it absorbs well and rarely causes the digestive upset common with cheaper forms like magnesium oxide. One practical tip, take it at night. Magnesium has a natural calming effect that may improve sleep quality, and better sleep supports better blood sugar control. Chromium picolinate. This trace mineral exists in tiny amounts in your body, but it plays a role in how cells respond to insulin signals. 
modern food processing removes most naturally occurring chromium from grains, and high sugar diets increase chromium excretion through urine. I need to be honest, research results on chromium are mixed. Some studies show clear benefits, others show minimal effects. But a pattern emerges from the data. Chromium appears most helpful in people with poor baseline glucose control and likely deficiency. What does the evidence say? A 1997 study from China involving 180 participants found that 1,000 micrograms of chromium picolinate daily reduced HbA1c levels to an average of 6.6% compared to 8.5% in the placebo group after four months. Fasting glucose was 15 to 19% lower in the high-dose chromium group. A systematic review in diabetes care analyzing multiple trials found chromium picolinate lowered A1c by an average of 0.6% in people with type 2 diabetes. Fasting glucose dropped approximately 0.8 millimoles per liter, roughly 14 milligrams per deciliter. However, and this is important, other studies, particularly in Western populations with adequate chromium status, showed no significant effect. This suggests chromium helps most when deficiency exists or when glucose control is already poor. If your chromium levels are fine, supplementing more won't help. Deficiency symptoms. Intense carbohydrate cravings you can't shake. Afternoon energy crashes that make you reach for sugar or caffeine. Difficulty concentrating or brain fog. Stubborn weight gain around your midsection despite consistent eating patterns. These symptoms overlapped with other conditions, so they're not diagnostic alone. Dosing and cautions. Clinical trials typically use 200 to 1,000 micrograms daily taken with meals. The NIH notes that doses up to 1,000 micrograms appear safe for most adults. Higher doses show no additional benefit and may increase side effect risk. If you take diabetes medication, especially insulin or sulfonylureas, monitor your blood sugar closely when adding chromium. It may enhance medication effects, potentially causing low blood sugar. Work with your doctor on any dosage adjustments. Zinc. Your pancreas contains more zinc than almost any other organ in your body. There's a biological reason. Zinc is essential for storing and releasing insulin from pancreatic beta cells. Without adequate zinc, insulin production and secretion become compromised. People with type 2 diabetes frequently have lower zinc levels than non-diabetics. High blood sugar increases zinc loss through urine while simultaneously impairing zinc absorption in the gut. Research estimates 30 to 50% of diabetics have inadequate zinc status. That's potentially half of all people with this condition walking around with a correctable deficiency. What does the clinical research show? A 2024 umbrella meta-analysis in Diabetology and Metabolic Syndrome pooled results from multiple systematic reviews. Zinc supplementation reduced fasting blood sugar by 13.58 mg per deciliter, reduced HbA1c by 0.35%, and significantly improved HOMA IR, a measure of insulin resistance. A dose-response meta-analysis of 22 studies published in 2023 found even larger effects. Fasting glucose dropped 23.32 mg per deciliter, HbA1c decreased 0.47%, and two-hour postprandial glucose fell 34.34 mg per deciliter. Subgroup analysis showed more pronounced effects in people with existing diabetes compared to those with prediabetes and those under 50 years of age. The research suggests zinc matters most when deficiency is present. How to recognize zinc deficiency? Slow wound healing is a classic sign, cuts that should close in days lingering for weeks or even longer. Catching every cold and infection that comes around because your immune system isn't functioning optimally. Hair loss beyond what's normal for your age. Persistent skin problems and acne. Diminished taste and smell. Unexplained glucose fluctuations despite consistent eating habits. Food sources and supplementation. 
Oysters are the richest source, 74 mg per 100 grams, far above any other food. Beef provides about 12 mg per 100 grams. Pumpkin seeds, chickpeas, and cashews offer plant-based options for those who prefer them. For supplements, doses of 25 to 50 mg daily appear effective in clinical trials. Taking zinc with food reduces stomach irritation that some people experience. Important warning. Do not exceed 40 mg daily long-term without medical supervision. Excessive zinc blocks copper absorption, potentially leading to anemia and immune dysfunction. Space zinc supplements at least two hours from antibiotics and certain blood pressure medications to prevent absorption interference. Selenium requires an honest discussion, and this is the controversial mineral I mentioned at the start. Unlike the first three minerals, selenium research for diabetes shows genuinely conflicting results. I'm including it here because some studies demonstrate benefits for insulin resistance, but you absolutely need the full picture before making any decisions about supplementation. What does research show for potential benefits? A 2022 meta-analysis of 10 randomized controlled trials in patients with cardiometabolic diseases found selenium supplementation significantly reduced insulin levels and improved HOMA-IR, that's a key insulin resistance marker. HDL cholesterol also increased, which supports cardiovascular health. A Greek longitudinal study in diabetic patients found 200 micrograms of selenium daily for six months produced statistically significant reductions in blood glucose, HbA1c, and cholesterol levels. Participants were following a Mediterranean diet alongside supplementation. However, and this is critical, here's the concerning evidence. A secondary analysis of the Nutritional Prevention of Cancer trial found that participants receiving 200 micrograms of selenium daily for 7.7 .7 years had a 55% higher risk of developing type 2 diabetes compared to placebo recipients. This was completely unexpected. Other analyses suggest selenium's effects follow a U-shaped curve. Both deficiency and excess may be harmful. Populations with already adequate selenium status may not benefit and could potentially experience negative effects from supplementation. Research indicates this positive association with diabetes risk increases dramatically above 80 micrograms of daily selenium intake in people who already have adequate levels. The practical takeaway. Selenium supplementation should only be considered if you have confirmed deficiency through blood testing, particularly if you live in a low selenium region like parts of Europe, China, or Africa. Most Americans and Australians have adequate selenium from diet alone. If you do consider supplementation, stay well below 200 micrograms daily unless working directly with a healthcare provider who has tested your levels. Brazil nuts provide a food-based alternative. Just two per day deliver approximately 100 to 150 micrograms naturally. Do not supplement selenium without discussing it with your doctor first, and ideally testing your baseline levels. This mineral genuinely requires more caution than the others I've discussed today. So where do you start after learning all this? First, consider asking your doctor about testing. Serum, magnesium, and zinc levels can reveal deficiencies, though intracellular testing provides better accuracy for magnesium specifically. Selenium testing is also available if you're considering that route. Second, start with one mineral, not all four at once. Magnesium is the safest and most broadly researched for diabetes support. It has the fewest potential downsides and the most consistent positive research. Track your fasting glucose and A1C over 8 to 12 weeks before evaluating whether supplementation is helping. Changes take time. Expecting overnight miracles leads to disappointment and abandoned efforts. These minerals support blood sugar management when deficiencies exist. They don't replace medication, diet modifications, or your doctor's guidance. They fill potential nutritional gaps that may be undermining your other efforts to control your glucose levels. If this video gave you useful, research-backed information you hadn't heard before, hit the like button. 
That simple action helps other people find evidence-based health content instead of hype and empty promises. Share this with a friend or family member who's struggling with their blood sugar numbers. Sometimes the right information at the right moment changes the trajectory of someone's health completely. Subscribe if you want more videos like this. No sensationalism, no miracle promises, just science you can actually use to make informed decisions about your health. Let me know in the comments which mineral you found most interesting or which one you might look into first. I read everything. Take care of yourself. I'll see you in the next one.